Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Running Reviews. Today we're gonna mix it up a little bit and take a look at a training shoe rather than a running shoe. We're taking a look at the Nano X2 from Reebok. Let's run with it. And before we get started, I do want to say these shoes were provided to me by Roadrunner Sports. However, I didn't have a chance to preview this video, and this final synopsis is my own. Let's get started. Reebok classifies the Nano X2 as the official shoe of fitness, and it's designed to kind of tackle a wide variety of activities, from running to lifting to HIIT workouts to walking and just casual wear in general. Now, it's important to keep in mind that this isn't like a hardcore powerlifting shoe for those ultra max heavy lifts, and it's not a performance running sneaker that you'll use for like a, a full marathon. It's more so like a general fitness shoe that can tackle a wide variety of situations. And the shoe has different kind of capabilities that we'll touch on later that really allow you to do that. The Nano X2 costs $140 and only comes in at 10.2 ounces, which is pretty good considering you get a lot of solid materials here. Is it the lightest training shoe ever? No, but 10.2 ounces I think is a good weight considering there's other like even running shoes that push into like the 12 ounce mark. So to have a solid training shoe with premium materials come in at around 10 ounces, I think is pretty good. As far as the stack height and drop goes, you get 19.5 millimeters in the heel with 12.5 in the forefoot with a seven millimeter drop. This remains unchanged from the previous version, the X1. Moving to the upper, we get a complete redesign here with a 50-50 split. The front half is that Reebok Flex Weave, which is basically like a really dense, thick knit upper. It's not elastic at all, um, and it's somewhat ventilated. You do get some breathability right in the middle of the toe box, but overall, it's not the most breathable shoe ever. And through the midfoot and rear of the shoe, it's basically plastic overlays that give the shoe a little bit more structure and help provide a solid lockdown. Something else I thought was really interesting about the upper is that there's actually a thin liner that pretty much covers most of the shoe up until the midfoot. And you would think looking at the shoe that your foot would actually interact with this flex weave material and the basically the upper in general, but there's actually another layer of material underneath the upper you can see here. So essentially it goes this flex weave upper, another thin layer of mesh or fabric, and then your foot. I thought it was fairly comfortable. I personally didn't have any issues with it. It performed well. The only negative I would say is that it inhibits the breathability just because the only ventilation you get is really in this toe box. And then there's another layer of fabric between your foot and the ventilation spot. But other than that, I thought it was fairly comfortable and kept my foot well contained. The toe box on the Nano X2 was very accommodating, plenty of room, really allowed my toes to kind of sprawl out. The only thing I will say, because there is so much room in that forefoot section, is that if you make a quick cut or if you're just changing direction fairly quickly, you'll notice a little bit of sliding in the forefoot region. But overall, with regard to the lockdown of the midfoot and rear of the shoe, I thought it was really good and I didn't feel like I had any heel lift and the midfoot felt really secure. You just have a little bit extra play in the forefoot region. And kind of going off that, I thought the lacing system was very robust. I was able to get a very secure and snug fit it and was able to kind of tailor it to what I needed depending on the activity I was doing. Moving on to the tongue, it's non-gusted. It has an average amount of padding. However, I do have one small gripe when it comes to this piece of the shoe. Basically, the edges of the tongue would fold under when you put your foot into the shoe about half the time. And when you like lace them up and you get that, that good fit, you'll notice that it just kind of has an extra kind of pain point where the tongue had folded under. Now, you can easily fix this if you kind of uh, rearrange the shoe on tight and then kind of just flatten out the tongue and slide your foot back in. So it's definitely fixable, but like some Sometimes just the way the shoe's manufactured, the edges of the tongue just easily fold underneath and then create like a little extra kind of pain point on both sides. It doesn't happen all the time, but it happened enough where I started to notice it. And you can easily fix it, but it's just annoying to kind of have to unlace your shoe, flatten out the tongue, relace your shoe just to get that good fit. So it's not like a deal breaker. It's not like the biggest thing ever and you can definitely fix it, but you do have to notice that the edges of the tongue do roll underneath and just create uh, an issue every now and then. And moving to the back of the shoe, I know some people had some issues with the heel of the X1. The X2 is a little little bit more flexible, a little bit softer. You won't get any kind of Achilles rubbing. I wore a low cut minimal socks the entire time just to, to test this. It's a little bit more low cut, I believe. So I didn't have any issues with my ankle rubbing or interacting with the uh, heel or ankle or Achilles region at all. So I think they were able to fix that issue. Felt very comfortable. You do get like a moderate amount of cushioning. Uh, the top of the heel counter is rather, rather, rather flexible. And then you get a little bit more stable of an internal heel counter as you go further down. But overall, I didn't really have any uh, issues with the ankle or Achilles area. I know that was a slight issue on the X1, so it looks like they fixed it here on the X2. The heel clip has actually been redesigned to be a lower profile, just a different configuration on the X1. I believe it came up a little bit higher on the heel, and now it kind of goes over a little bit more towards the midfoot, and basically you get these large kind of plastic supports on both the lateral and the medial side, and what this does for a training shoe is it allows it to keep it from flexing too much, gives you a little bit more stability, and allows the shoe to really flex in the forefoot region while having stability through rest of the midfoot. This basically gives you a 
more stable, more controlled experience while you're lifting weights or doing different kinds of like high explosive movements. And for me personally, this reconfiguration worked. I don't have any kind of gripes or complaints versus the old shoe versus this shoe. I thought it worked well through my movements, through my exercises, kept me supported uh, and felt very stable. The midsole does feature float ride energy foam, which you can actually see if you flip the shoe over, you can see it in the heel and the forefoot. It's basically the little white dots that kind of shine through. And essentially float ride energy foam was a nice stable firm experience while giving you a nice level of cushioning and impact protection. Now, if you're coming from a running shoe, this midsole is gonna be extremely firm if you're coming from a powerlifting shoe, this might be a little bit too soft for you. But if you consider what Reebok designed the shoe for, it's kind of a shoe for general fitness, I think it works really well. You want a nice kind of stable, relatively firm midsole that doesn't have too much squish or instability. And I thought it did it. I really enjoyed it and it worked really well for all the different workouts that I tried. And moving to the outsole, you get full rubber coverage here. I think it's pretty much the same kind of setup as last year. I personally didn't have any issues. Gripped the ground well, had good traction. Uh, and you do get these kind of tiny, consistent lugs throughout the entire shoe with a really wide midfoot section which helps with the overall stability. And if you flip the shoe around, they also do have something called Rope Pro. It basically is a design on the medial side that allows you to grip the rope, give you a little bit more traction as you go up. I personally don't do rope climbs. They don't have it at my gym, so I didn't really get to test it, but it is a design feature that they did build into the Nano X2. The first big positive for me was the overall durability in the premium materials. That flex weave upper just felt very nice. The midfoot, the lacing, everything just felt like a premium solid experience. I think the shoe will probably last you quite a while. It doesn't feel like it was cheaply made. I think for someone who's using it for like different workouts and things like that, you don't want it to fall apart on your feet. So having something that felt secure and felt well made on my foot was a huge plus for me. And for a general fitness shoe, I thought it was really comfortable. I didn't have any issues. I worked for hours on end and it just fit my foot really well. You get plenty of room in the toe box area. The midfoot was a good lockdown and you get plenty of padding in the ankle and Achilles area. Plus the midsole did a good job of being firm yet having enough cushioning for long wear. And the last positive I'll say is that it did exactly what it's supposed to do. It's not supposed to be the best running shoe. It's not supposed to be the best powerlifting shoe. It's supposed to be a general fitness shoe. And I thought it did that. I did a whole wide variety of workouts, treadmill, box jumps, squats, lunges, you name it. I tried to you know put it through its paces and it performed well. Again, not the best shoe at like any particular category, but like a nice jack of all trades. The first negative for me was the tongue. It just had the sides that would roll underneath itself and kind of create a pain point on either side of my foot. It's not gusseted. So the, the the sides of the tongue aren't attached to anything, so they're free to kind of move about, and they would just roll underneath themselves, create an extra kind of pain point, and I would have to stop and fix it. Um, but once you fix it, it would go away. It's just having to take the time to kind of stop, untie your shoe, flatten the tongue, and then retie your shoe, uh, which is kind of annoying. So easy fix, but it's just kind of one of those small inconveniences uh, for a running shoe. So hopefully they'll make it a little bit less annoying in the future. So where does that leave us? Well, I think it's a good general fitness shoe that works for a wide variety of workouts. Again, if you're like a special runner or if you're a power lifter I probably wouldn't use this shoe because this is designed to be a general fitness shoe and not necessarily like a true hardcore power lifting shoe which I think some of the previous nano versions were in the past so I would just keep that in mind however I really liked it just for a wide variety of workouts it performed well this minor tongue issue was just that it was a minor issue nothing you can't get around but the premium materials and the overall build quality I thought were were definitely top notch and I think the shoe will probably last you well and I have no problem recommending it I thought it just felt very nice on foot well, that concludes the review. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you like the overall styling? Do you like the update? And are you going to give the X2 a chance? Well, I'm Ryan from Ryan's Running Reviews. Hope you guys have a great day. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks.